There was a time Jesus discovered his disciples were faced with a situation where they can't help themselves. They were called to cast out the devil from a young boy, but the devil never get out. And all of a sudden, Peter came to ask Jesus, say, Master, why were we not able to cast out this demon from this boy? Jesus said, it's because of your faith. He said, because you don't have enough faith. He said, if you have faith, like as small as the mustard seed, you shall speak to this mountain. Mountain, move. And that mountain will move and cast on yonder. Now, obviously, you are faced with certain mountains in your life. And you may be addressing those mountains. And those mountains could be very stubborn. But you know what happened? You keep speaking to those mountains. At the time you spoke to that mountain once, it may not respond. But you should not stop speaking to it. Just keep talking to the mountain. Let me tell you something that happened at the cross of Calvary. When Jesus died on the cross, he did something that brings issue of people come condemning themselves that they can't do it. I'm not qualified to do it. I can't do it. Now, for the fact that you always say you cannot do it, it's, it's a demonstration of your faithlessness. That means you don't have faith. You shouldn't be thinking that you are not qualified enough to get the blessings of God. You're not qualified enough to speak to the mountain. Mountain, go. No, you are qualified. You say, Pastor, no, you don't understand what I'm talking about. I'm not holy. I do nasty things. I do foolish things. If I pray, God will not answer me. Who told you that? Now, do you know that when Jesus died on the cross, he died because of your sins. No, listen to me. When he said it is finished, don't forget that he has other things to do after being buried for the last three, three days in the grave. But he said it is finished right on the cross. What does he really mean by it is finished when he has three more dark conditions to pass through? When he still has to go to the grave, stay there and battle with the devil and go to hell. When he said it was finished on the cross, means the right blood was shed to cover your sin. And that means the sins you committed before and the sins you committed now were all settled. It is finished. That means your sins were not, are not, the, your sins are not imputed into you any longer. Or let me say, your sins will no longer be remembered. Or your sin will no longer be accounted against you any longer. That is it. Because of his blood that was shed on the cross. That sacrifice that was made. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to let you know that. Don't look at yourself. Don't write yourself down. Don't, be, don't condemn yourself. Self-condemnation will not make you to achieve it. Some people say, well... I want to cast out this devil. I want to pray for this sick. And I have to go and confess my sins first. Yes, it's good to confess your sin. But the issue is this. Just know that your sins have already been taken care of. Even before you want to start that prayer. Now, how many confession that the thief at the cross actually made before Jesus said, I forgive him his sins? Look at that time when uh, uh, the disciples were in the prison. And that jailer came and said, what must I do to be saved? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and that shall be saved. Do you know, his house believed and were baptized and were saved. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. How many confessions did they make? I'm not against confession. It's good to confess. When you confess your sins, you will be forgiven. But don't think it is because of your confession that will make jesus to forgive you you are confessing to clear your conscience so that your conscience will be clear that you have talked to god about it 
it is not that confession that is going to bring forgiveness. It is the death of Jesus on the cross that brought forgiveness to you. And so, if you argue with me that, oh, well, it's the, it's the confession done. Do you know how many sins you commit? He said, our righteousness is as filthy rag. So, how will you be able to know all the sins you'll be committing with your eye, with your thought, with your thinking, and confess all? You don't even know all. So, so the ones you don't confess, the ones you couldn't remember, God takes care of them by his love, not because of anything, by his love, death on the cross of Calvary. Now, so don't confess yourself, be, con condemn yourself, that God is not going to hear your prayer, God is not going to give you a baby, God is going to give, make your ministry grow, God is going to, not going to uh, open the door for you because of what you did. No, sir, it is not because of that. He is going to bless you because of Jesus. It is finished on the cross. He is going to bless you because of what he has accomplished already. So, when you come to God, you must come to God boldly. That is it. Come to God boldly. You could actually say, I am talking to the king. If God deliver me from this fire, good and fine. If God did not deliver me from this fire, this furnace of fire, I'm not ready to bow down to your idol, O king Nebuchadnezzar. That is the situation. You should put yourself. Now take a look. When you look through the Bible, if you think yourself to be a vile man, a vile woman, a, I mean, a nobody in the society and God is not going to be help you, you're not going to save you, it's not going to bless you, it's not going to give you a baby, it's not going to give you a husband, it's not going to give you children, it's not going to prosper your business. Just take a look. God is not looking for the most qualified. He said, I came because of those who are sick. I came for the unrighteous so that I can make them righteous. Now, when you look through the Bible, now the first five books of the Bible was written written by a man we can actually call a murderer moses murdered someone the first five books of the bible genesis and others were written by murderer and by murderer and that and god still picked him up and used him now look at david the man after god's heart was also a murderer was an adulterer was a, a, a shit or liar or whatever and all the things he did and yet god says a man after god's heart look at peter himself peter was one who denied jesus who took a knife and cut off the ear of someone who wanted to arrest jesus he was a fighter he was aggressive person yet he stood and a minister and life was transformed when you go through the bible you will see the catalog of people who committed offense, who should be condemned, who should have not have the ability to face God any longer. But you know, no, do you know what happened? They were the best of God. It's not because of anything, it's because of your God's love. His love makes you to have a right standing before Him. His love makes you to be qualified to receive His blessings. So when the mountain is there, just know you can address the mountain. Just know you can speak to that mountain. That mountain will obey you. All you have to do is to receive the love of God. And it messes you. You don't need to ask God, say, God, give me mercy. Oh, Lord, give me grace. The grace is already given. The mercy is already given. All you do is just to receive the abundant grace God has given to you. Receive the abundant love God has given to you. And you begin to move from step to step to God's glory and God's goodness. Yeah, you may be facing situation where you say, Pastor, I just lost my position. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what to do. Yes, I've also found myself in a situation where I don't really know exactly what to do. I don't know where to go. And knowing the will of God on certain issue was a problem to me too. And I have also been in that position. But listen to me, friend. When you are in such position, what do you do? How do you go about facing those things up? Knowing for sure that knowing the will of God is as simple as A, B, C, D. Now, you want to take a particular decision. You want to get a job or an employment 
or you want to move out of town or a decision of who to get married or you want to take a particular course what do god want me to do at this particular time now listen to me god cooperate with you in anything he want to do for you if you want to guide you he cooperate with you now take note god gave us the earth to dominate he needs your permission to actually walk on this earth yes pastor and what are you saying yes god created the world and gave it to us as a gift he said take i gave you the world take dominion take control of everything i have big i have heaven endless world here is my footstool heaven is my throne i just walk on the street i can go when you tell me to come i come operate but then give me permission to operate and that is why god cannot impose his will on you he always walk with at with you he gives you an intuition he make you to fall in love with a particular thing he make you to desire a particular thing now take note of your desire your desire must line up with the word of god it must be scriptural for example now if you are desiring to snatch another man's wife or to snatch another, uh, another uh, woman's husband, that is ungodly desire. If you are desiring to snatch somebody's escar, that is ungodly desire. If you are desiring to forge certificate or do bribing or corruption, that is an ungodly desire. Now, the desire must be according to the will of God and the purpose of God. So the first thing God wants to do, if he wants to direct you on a particular, he will put a, a holy desire on, on it. He will begin to make you see the interest of this thing you want to do. Then when you begin to desire that thing, now take note. When God is giving you a desire, one, it must line up with the scripture. Secondly, that desire does not come in hurry as a force or as a push do it now or never that is trickster that is scam that is I mean scam they will put you to do it right now do it don't tell anybody do it no that desire will be there and it will be gentle take note it will be filled with the with love and peace of mind so when you desire when you discover you have a, a desire that is in line with the scripture and you discover that there's love inside there's peace of mind inside and the desire still stay for a while now like three days four days five days the desire is still there then god is the one who's actually speaking for you to you if the devil is giving an ungodly desire you'll be troubled you'll be filled with nightmare you'll be filled with fear you'll be filled with tension it will be telling you do it immediately do it now or never hurry go and do it and if the devil is the one doing a flesh flesh doing it after about seven days it will die off but when it is god seven days still there now that is the things to to measure a godly desire and when it happened like that the lord is guiding you instructing you directing you that this is the step you need to do take this is the step you need to take if you follow it it will be well with you now friends take note of this how are you monitoring your life and how are you doing to get the best desire now also god I, i'm not against god speaking to people by vision by dream god speak to people that way but then this is the general principle and the other one is god leading you step by step guiding you step by step you just don't know you just find yourself in that situation you just discover god although still open certain opportunity for you of obviously every opportunity God open every guidance and leadership step by step God is given it must all in line with the Word of God if not throw it away trash it and when God gives you an opportunity and God is taking you to his new step he will always give you the leadership and the peace and the love and the joy towards it and you begin to follow what God is doing now one of the things I want to say before I sign up is this you see 
when God takes you to a place, He pays for your fare. When God guides you or directs you for something, He protects you. God can't say, "Go and stay in Gonengora and send somebody to kill you." He won't send. He won't do it. If God tells you, "Go and stay in Gonengora, go and stay in, in such and such city," He will actually be there to keep you in that city. If you stay somewhere else, He may not be there. Now, again, if God said, "Do this business or do that job or do that work," And he give you a holy desire that is stayed for a long time and you still have that desire. You go and do it. Do you know what happened? By faith, you apply God into it. Faith is important when you take the step, the things of God. Do you know, God is going to be with you and back you up with that business. God will not tell you to do things that will kill you. And God will not tell you to do things that will become a, a problem to you. There may be storm in it, but those storms are there to strengthen you, to make the thing better and refine it so that it can it can guide you because sometimes troubles are there to to take you from a certain line to another line that is better for you because those trouble will come because those if it does not come you will go into a wrong course so he takes the trouble so that he can push you from that area and take you to see another option that could be a blessing to you my friend i want you to know that god is too much and you want to take you to a bigger position that you will never regret for and that is it now friend i want to let you know that the peace of god will reign and rule in your life and you will never be an object of regret in life life is sweet life is pleasant life is sweet but then how do you prepare your house? A woman who wants his home, her home, a woman who wants her home to be at the best, will always do everything to secure peace and love and unity in the home. A man who wants to enjoy the, ho ho the wife will definitely will do everything he can to put food on the table and to show love to the wife. Now, Depend on how you what you want and how you prepare yourself to get it. Friend, this is time for you to look inward and say, What is inside me? Is it grudges, pain, regret, failure, sorrow? If that is inside you, just know you will not be able to reap anything good. Now begin to bring out good fruit from your inside. Let people begin to see the good fruits. Admire the group food, and you'll be at, you'll be attractive to prosperity, to breakthrough, through favor, and to people around. And I believe that when you walk in peace, you will get peace. When you walk in love, you will get love. But if you frown your face all the time, and the people in your cycle, maybe in your house, that you don't want to see eyeball to eyeball and irritates you just know that you are already making yourself not comfortable you won't enjoy it and those who with you will not enjoy it be yourself and be a better tomorrow because god loves you and he want to make something beautiful out of your life may god bless you may his face shine upon you may you enjoy the light of the day in jesus mighty name amen and amen